G'day YouTubers, Harry Houdini here, down under in Australia. Now look, we're back with a final instalment of the Hetsa. Yes, it's been coming along very nicely and um, I've got it nearly done. Now, you probably want to know what I've been up to, so take a look. Now if you're watching last time, you'd have seen we put the little dot filters on, which is sort of like a wash, but really we're doing little streaky effects and that, um, that went all along the, uh, the hull along the sides here, and that, that's turned out really well. That's accentuated all kinds of things and given me some um, pretend natural griminess. Now I also ran a quick wash on the wheels, only so I could take the photos and sort of finish that video off. But what I thought I'd do is, um, I'll show you how to do the wash on the other side. Because I had to let that sit basically in this position, and let it sit for a couple of days because that odorless thinner takes quite a while for it to dry. So let's flip this little fella over carefully. I have to be careful because the, uh, the MGs come loose. <laughs> Despite cementing it in, it's managed to wobble itself free, but that's okay. I'll um, pop the top off, which isn't cemented on hard. Um, just carefully put that out the way. As you can see, these wheels are too pretty. So that's what we're going to work on right now. And what I've done is I've mixed, again, that um, brown wash for green. All right, just an enamel wash from Meg, and I've mixed it 50-50. Now the reason I'm going 50-50 with this is the washes that you get from Ammo Meg, well, you could apply them pretty well as they are, and they're fine if you're doing that trick where you put them on and then you rub them off, but if you want to put them on so they just run into crevices, like, which is what you really do with the wash, then um, you need them about half as thin. So, see, at 50-50 this runs very nicely into all those crevices. Alright, so we'll do this wheel and we just basically give it a uh, and see it runs around it all, it basically you can put it in one end right, and it'll work its way around and run into pretty well all the others. See, look at that even out. Okay, so we'll do this one as well, so pop it on here and it will find all the little nooks and crannies and do the work for us. And there's a bit of spottiness, but I don't mind. That's because it's a thick wash. If you're running a thinner wash, you wouldn't get that much for effect. Alright, so again on this one, pop it on here. Pop it on here. And once you've got the thinner all the way around, it'll run into every little corner. Okay? Now if you've got too much, see that one's probably a bit heavier than that one, alright? So you've got too much, Clean your brush off and use the brush to pull off what you don't want. And see what magically happens? It evens itself out. It runs into all those corners. So again, I could just take it off here and here and here. Right, and you watch it, it will actually run. As long as you've got thinner everywhere. I mean, the other trick is to actually put thinner on and tap your wash on the top. That's another way to do it. And I've shown that in other videos. But what I'm doing here, I'm basically just putting my very... Um, thinned out wash. So it's 50% thinner than what Ammo Meg provides. So again, there you go, and just a touch more on this side, and it'll naturally start running and evening itself out all the way around. Okay, and if I've got too much, again, just get it off your brush. There you go. So that's all there is to it. Washing with this ammo mix stuff is so easy. And the results are lovely. Okay? And I can mess around and get a patina that I want on the other parts. So how's that look? Is that um you know, is it looking fairly good? This wheel could probably do with a little more, couldn't it? So just put a tiny bit more in there. And so if you dab it on a line, it'll basically through capillary action run around that line. Alright, so dab it over here on a line and it'll, it'll find that line and run around. So I can go back here if I decide that's not thick enough and just tap it into anywhere there's a line. And because I've got solution there, because I've already wiped the thinner everywhere, it's going to run. 
and there's gloss on there as well. It was basically primed with um, with the Tamiya rattle cans, which give you a sort of a bit of a sort of a semi-gloss coat anyway. They're quite magic. Uh, the airbrush is great, and I'm really enjoying doing all that. But I tell you what, there's some things that I did with rattle cans that were so easy. That really were so easy. So here you see, I'm putting it on, and then I'm cleaning my brush and taking it off until I get the level of the effect that I want. See that? And it will run all the way around. So I take it off at one side and it runs all the way and evens out. So I think that's pretty well even. That's that's the kind of look that I want for there. And if you would see this roller, I would weather it as well. And we'd weather up the suspension arms as well. And one other thing I did was I ran a little bit of this on the tyres, just to kind of take the paint shine off them and grubby them up a bit. Well, it's just a little trick that I found. You run a bit of a dark wash. I mean, I, I paint my tyres in German grey, um, and then I find if you then run a little bit of a dark wash over them, uh, the wash runs into, if you haven't quite sprayed it correctly, it hasn't, isn't too perfect, the dark wash runs into those little rim edges and it fills and it hides all the sins. So there you are. That's the wheels now basically um, washed. And, and they're not going to need much more. A bit of chipping and a little bit of dry brushing, they'll be fine. So they'll need a day or two to dry to the level that I want before I can do any more work on them. So there's a bit of a waiting game here. Here we are a day later, and well, a couple of days actually, and the um, all of that washing has dried. <laughs> well, washing's dry, should have put it through a dryer. Uh, that wouldn't work. <laughs> you can imagine putting this in the dryer, it'd be a bloody awful mess. Now, uh, one thing that I wasn't happy about is um, the little hatch that was on the top here. It was kind of boring, and I actually had a couple of injector pin marks I thought I'd um, sand it out, and they were still showing, and it really didn't look very nice. So, I found some photos of what the real hatch looked like on this Hetzer, and then I added some photo etch like this. These were just bits I had lying around um, off other builds and a couple of pieces left over in this build that I didn't use. So I popped that on and gave it a quick coat of uh, German creme wise, which in my case is just a racing white <laughs> Tamiya. Sorry, my hands are wobbly, and I've actually got a little handle on there and a little bit of detail and that's quite spiffy so there you go i also reduced that edge took that back a bit it um this hat should sit down and just miss that little knobbly bit so i resized it reshaped it and here it is so let's um let's pop her in and um see how it's going to look So that should fit exactly there. There we go. So that's going to fit exactly where it should. It's now the correct colour. Tomorrow I'll put a little wash on that. It'll take like two seconds. Put a tiny little uh, dark wash on that and I'll be able to dry that very quickly because I won't put much on and I won't use any odorless thinner. I'll just quickly uh, put a very thin amount on there and that, that'll be done. But um, what we need to get on with is just a little bit of chipping. It doesn't need much. And in fact, that doesn't need much mud either. I'm pretty happy with everything the way it is. I have gone around and added a little more um, of a wash while I was doing those wheels. I went and added a bit more in crevices and everything. And I'm, I'm very happy with the overall look that I've got for this Hetzer. So I'm going to leave it at that. Now another thing that I didn't really like in the kit were these tow cables. They were just basically pieces of cotton. Now the hooks are quite nice on them, but this stuff just doesn't seem to cut the mustard for me. I'm really not happy with it at all. So I invested in this aftermarket one, which gives you this lovely um, piece of copper, right, which you could probably rip out of somewhere else, you know. But but it's 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 the right size, two scale, and that's pretty well the size of a German tow cable. Now their little um, hookies, well, they're a bit ordinary. They're not as nice, and you'd have to um, you have to drill them out, which is going to be a bit of a tricky job with wobbly hands like me. So. I'm going to do some surgery here and use the um, the little hooks off here, which are great, and they've only got the cotton in there, so that should just basically pretty well just rip out. Look at that! Yeah, they'll just <laughs> not much not much effort required there. I'll, I'll do that off camera, but um, that'll just pull out of there, 
and um, luckily they had a little trough in them and so I'll be able to scrap that trough clean get the copper in and bingo bongo we should have some snappy tow cables there what do you think of that that's a big improvement isn't it doesn't look like bloody string now see there's um, there's the other one they um, they've come up mighty be lovely if you just leave them looking coppery but of course they wouldn't be they would have been painted and um, they would have got dirty and grimy. So they're going to get some German grey in just a sec. Now, what we're going to do is, while they go and get painted, we're going to do a little bit of chipping. And we're going to use the sponge method. In the last series of videos on the BD7, you would have seen I used the hairspray technique for doing chipping. And that was pretty savage and it was really exciting. But we're just going to do some very subtle little chips with this. Now, all I've done here is my sanding sponges that I use. These are little sponges that I get from 3M, the sanding. They're absolutely brilliant. When I finish with them, I cut them up into tiny little pieces and then CA glue them on the end of a toothpick and that makes a little chipping rod. So I'll show you now how I use that to do just a little bit of subtle chipping. Now I've got some uh, life colour paint here. This is like a, um, a German grey. It's fairly dark. It's part of the modulation set that I was using back on the Panzer II and the Stog actually, yeah, one or the other. And um, I've already shaken it up and I've got a little bit in here which I can wet my sponge. And then what you do is you get rid of, it's almost like dry brushing, you get rid of most of it until it's really not too, um, too wet because you don't want it wet. Then, let's see if I can tilt this up so you can see what's going on here. Right, you can see that? Yes. Then very carefully and very gently you're just turning it constantly because you don't want the same thing. You apply some tiny chips. All right. So let's. I don't want much. My rebel hetzer is um, not too bad, Nick. So just a few little things, and this is adding to the wash which we've already done, and that's just giving us a few little chippy bits. And again, I didn't rotate there, so it started to look like the same pattern. You've got to remember to rotate here, Udini. You've got to keep rotating the whole time and using different corners of it. And there we go. There's um, just some very subtle chipping. And that's all I want. I don't want much. So I really just sort of want the odd little scratch and chip here and there. So let's, um, let's do something like uh, here. This, uh, this thing we just have tiny little chips where people would bang into it on the edge there. So that's all it would have. And along here this thing not that you're going to see it, German grey and German grey, but because we've got all those other washers on there I'll probably get away with it. So you can do that. Oh my MG's come loose again, bloody thing. It's always coming loose. Loose as a goose in there. I suppose it would wobble normally. And um, we can put a few little chips on the front plate here. Going for areas where there would be wear and tear. So this is sort of almost like dry brushing because we're using the minuscule, tiniest amounts of paint. Hardly any paint at all. And that's that's the thing here. You don't want this to be very obvious at all. And this being a dark colour with a hole, you're really not going to see much of this. But it will be there. It's sort of a thought of thing that if you didn't do it, it would be more obvious. Everything would be too perfect. All right, so this here... Let me turn this so you can see. All right. This thing here has just had a wash on it, but it's um, still very clean. So what we'll do is chip its edge and chip its top. Okay, And these will probably show up better in the photographs later, but that tiny little bit of chipping really does make the difference. It, um, it just breaks things up and it randomises edges and things which otherwise may be looking a little too perfect after all the, the washing and everything so it's a good thing about chipping, it's just sort of that final bit it's the icing on the cake um, so here's another little thing here, can you see this one? this is that little um, lunch box at the back there I still don't know what goes in there, I imagine it's just their tools and um, what we'll do is we'll just chip the places that would get wear and tear you don't want to chip everywhere. So 
are just the edges that will get knocked. And it's so tiny this. That's about all we need. That's all we need. I wonder if you can actually see that if I bring it up nice and close. There you go. So that just has tiny chips on it now. See? Just looks a little scuffed up, mucked up, exactly as a little box like that would be. Um, I'll get on with it, and then I'll get those um, tow cables out, assemble this all up, and we'll do the final reveal. And here's my Prague Hetzer complete. Three months work, and I'm pretty happy with that. I think it's probably one of the better AFV vehicles that I've ever made. And... Um, unusual sort of paint scheme. I mean, not much in the construction. It's a pretty basic kit to build, really. But the fun was sort of in getting those decals on and getting that interesting paint job without it looking too gaudy, because it's sort of a lot of colours. Could look like Noddy's car. But I'm pretty happy with the result and how I've managed to get everything sort of weathered enough so that it looks like it would have been roaming around the streets of Prague during the uprising. So there you go. I hope you like that. That is my Prague. 38T Hetzer. I'm calling it done. Well, there it is. Hetzer's all done. And I'm pretty happy about that. Yeah. Easy kit to build. Only a few little things to look out for. If you look back at the earlier uh, episodes on this, um, this series, you'll see uh, a few little tips and tricks that I pointed out. But not much. You can just build it out of the box. Not a problem at all, really. No, it's a, it's a nice little kit, really. It's um, It goes together fairly well. The fun is all those bloody decals. They're so nice. And then, you know, playing around with this unusual rebel paint job. You know, those bloody rebels. They painted it up so gaudily. Uh, but I think I've done it justice. At least I'm happy. And, and that's what this modelling and, and this hobby is all about for me, right? Um, am I happy at the end of the day? Am I happy with what I did? And I am. I really am. So I hope this might encourage you to get on and build something of your own and just, you know, have a go. And do whatever you want with it. And enjoy what you're doing. Don't worry too much about the details. And don't bloody count the rivets. Just have fun. Enjoy your hobby. And then maybe you'll be as happy and smiley as I am. So there you go. Anyhow, I, um, I've got to wait back from the Riverside Scale Modelers to see how I went in the competition. Not that it really matters, but she'd be nice if I won, wouldn't it? Alrighty. Well, that's it. Signing off on the headset. Now, I'll put a link on here on this youtube -y video thingy. Uh, because I'll also do a whole lot of photos tonight and I'll post them up on Facebook and it'll be an album you can look at without a Facebook account. So you Facebook haters, don't stress. You can just have a look at those photos. All right, well, there you go. 500 damn subscribers now. <laughs> I better start bloody pulling my finger out and up my game. <laughs> nah, it's just going to be some old crap I always do. All right, whoops, <laughs> there you go. Nearly knocked me bloody model flying. There would have been tears. Okay, well, that's it. That's all I can say. It's goodbye from Australia and it's hooroo from Harry Houdini. Mm -hmm.